Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today you join me for the first of two Italian Grand Prix. This one is the Emilia Romana Grand Prix, and the other one is Monza. It's quite self-explanatory. Anyways, <laughs> off the back of a win, there's a lot of pressure from me to do well. Uh, like at least midway through the points. I reckon Mick will do really good. Because he did really good at Bahrain until his car blew up or whatever happened. I don't know. Yeah. But without further ado, let's get into qualifying. Uh, I think I set two laps, but I only show you the end of the second one. It speeds things up. Because this is the more boring stuff, so I'm going to do that from now on. Cool little cutscene here. Or else my nose is wham. Bloody hell. Right, yeah. Finishing off lap two. We're currently in P13. We're going to improve by about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 seconds uh, going green as we go over the line. That's pretty nifty. Welcome once again to the Autodromo Internazionale Enzo e Dino Ferrari. The clue's in the name. This is very much Ferrari home turf, and the locals will be out in force today to support their team in what we hope will be a magnificent spectacle of motorsport. On then to the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. 3.1 miles of track here at Imola featuring 19 turns, 9 to the right and 10 to the left. Remember that Imola differs from most other Formula 1 circuits as it's driven anti-clockwise. Let's hope no one forgets that today. The exit from turn 18 will probably be the setup for many of today's overtakes, leading as it does into the longest straight of the circuit and its only DRS zone. Anthony Davidson also joins me in the commentary box today. Let's start with Alfa Romeo. There have been some tweaks to the power unit regulations, of course, and I have to say it doesn't seem, so far at least, that they've been able to keep up. It doesn't look promising for them so far. And if the new regs have hit them as hard as we think, well, I suspect they may need a few late nights at the factory to get back on track. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have... Ricardo, Norris, Carlos Sainz, and Leclerc, Perez, Gasly, Vettel, and Reed, Mick Schumacher, Verstappen, Yuki Tsunoda, and Giovinazzi, Ocon, Russell, Lance Stroll, and Daniel Tictum. Raikkonen, Mazepin, Aitken, and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Starting P10 then. Our first time actually starting in the top 10. Well, we've qualified in the top 10 and not just been in the top 10 so we we are stuck to these softs we're gonna go soft soft medium i think if i remember correctly yeah soft soft medium uh we're gonna see how things go um i'm reckoning the top couple will go for a one stop so win is kind of out of our reach but it was kind of close to the outer reach anyways anyways without further ado to five red lights the Emilia Romana Grand Prix is underway. We get a pretty good start here. Vettel to our left. We get past him. Gasly and Perez battling ahead. We're going to break a little bit early up here. Just so we don't rear end Gasly. That's not what we want. Vettel should be able to get past. Bit of a bump over there into turn two, but it's fun. We make it around a little bit slidey there. That's just the U softs for you. Uh, and we manage to keep it on track. Which is nice. Go for a dive down the inside of Gasly here into that turn. Don't know the turn numbers for this circuit. I don't know turn numbers for any circuit, but that's not the point. Anyways, on to lap two at the end here then. We are going to have DRS. Hamilton sets the fastest. I mean, we're going. DRS is going to be active. DRS My will be enabled this lap. You can Bugger use that. It when within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Okay, Jeff. We know what DRS is. Come on. I'm not stupid here. Anyways. It's six laps into the race. Every single lap we've been nudging closer and closer to Perez here. This might be the first time we can actually get past him. 
We're going to have DRS. He's going to have DRS on Science, though. But it's, so it's still a DRS strain, which is annoying. That's the only th thing with this circuit, is only having one DRS, so there's not many overtakes. It's a bit boring. But it means I don't have to edit this as much. So, that's good. <laughs> we're on to the end of lap 8 now. We probably could have got Perez if we tried, but we're boxing this lap for a new set of softs. I'm going to cut it very close to that pit lane. I don't like this pit lane, it's so long. Like, going down it, going into it is really quick, but leaving it... My little bloody... I don't know. 2.3 seconds ox. Pretty decent there. But you'll see, like, this is all so unnecessary. This could be, like, full speed, but no. Got to restrict it all the way up until this line here. Okay, stay and we're clear out. Of the white line on the exit. There's a we'll yellow flag the ahead of an Aspen's gone off the track. Stroll's gone off. I don't know what's happened there. We'll get a replay of that, hopefully. But Stroll is off. Gone, mate. What's happened here, then? Alfa Romeo on his right. That's George Russell. He taps him, taps him again, and just gets pushed off track. His own fault, I think. But we move. Anyways, now, onto the start of lap 10. Pushing our way down the straight. We're going to overtake Norris as he pits for his soft tyre. Latifi up ahead in the Haas. That feels illegal to say. That should not be allowed. Latifi in a Haas. Anyways, on the left-hand side of him, then. Pretty nice. Pretty clean. But yeah, Latifi in a Haas is nice weird, move. man. Good job. Cheers, Jeff. Onto the start of lap 11 then. Two green sectors and a purple sector three to give us the fastest lap. Seconds. That's what you like to see. Very much so. Anyways, lap 11 now. Behind Aitken in the Williams also feels illegal to say. Our previous teammate, we have gotten past him with no trouble there. Williams is the only car that isn't above Haas. So that shouldn't be too tricky to pass. Lap 11 then, Mick is in the pits, Lewis Hamilton nabs the fastest lap, that's understandable, he is going to eventually, it's the Mercedes, a lot of people in the pit then, actually a lot of people in the pit, bloody hell, most going on to hards, this might have been the dumbest strategy call ever, a yellow flag ahead again on the same turn Stroll went off, this time it's Ocon that went off, is this the same jobby Red Bull on the left? That's Max Verstappen there. A little bit of contact. It's the exact same thing that happened to Stroll. Wow. Like, that's not even... Alright, ticked him then. Ticked him in the Williams. Oh, there's so much illegal things that should not be allowed to be said. But ran the inside of him. Shut up, Jeff. Fortunately, the Cheers for that overtake. Nice and nifty. No Shouldn't. Right now. Nearly got hold up, but didn't. Anyways, lap 13 then, on to 14. Giovinazzi and Bottas ahead. Never mind, Giovinazzi's in the pits. Russell and Bottas ahead. We're coming up on the back of Raikkonen then. He's a blue flagger. As Russell and Bottas fight it out. It would have been funnier if Russell was going for Mercedes, because it would be Bottas's replacement fighting Bottas. But, we move. Anyways. Midway through lap 14 and go wide a little bit there. Ru Bottas slows down. Why he's done that, I'm not too sure. But we swish past him. Nice and easy. Russell is our next target then. In that Alfa Romeo, we skip ahead a little bit. In fact, these two will be switching places in real life for the next season. Uh, Bottas to Alfa and Russell to Mercedes. But Oh, he's going into the pit. Cool. Waste of my time. Nah, I'm kidding. But yeah, in the pit he goes. Probably I'm assuming for a set of hards. He wouldn't pit this late, I don't think. On to lap 16 and halfway through the Grand Prix, we're at MP2. Down the main straight, that is an Alpha Tauri going slow. Yellow flag. Is that Yuki or Pierre? That is Yuki Sonoda out of the race. Alpha Tauri has had the worst durability in these past couple of seasons. Lap 18 then. Pitting, cutting it very fine. Uh, we'll be pitting for the mediums. Uh, 
and that will be what we run our final 12 laps on. Or uh, 13, I don't know how many laps it is, I can't do the maths in my head. It's weird, isn't it? But, we go 2.7 stop. Not great. I do wish you could upgrade your pit crew. You know, like, you can get your marketing, you can get your driver, like, your second driver up. Kind of wish you could do the same with, that was our last stop. um, no more the pit crew. Stops. Maybe F1 2022. Take some notes. Ooh. Yeah, I have loads of ideas for F1 2022 to make it way better. I might have to share. I won't. I can't be bothered. And they're probably pretty bad. Anyway, so lap 20. Verstappen and Schumacher ahead. We have DRS on Verstappen. Verstappen has DRS on Schumacher. We go around the outside. Got some contact. Schumacher's been pushed into the side of us by Verstappen. Schumacher is off the track. Lap 24 then, Giovinazzi in the Alpine, another illegal thing to say. I don't like this man. <laughs> There's too much stuff that shouldn't be allowed. We go around the outside or inside or... I wasn't okay, focusing. I know this. But now, lap 27, Leclerc in P4, we are P5. Probably our last, the last person we could possibly overtake before the end of this race because Ricardo is way too far ahead. We'll catch up, but we won't make it past. DRS on Leclerc then. ERS. He's got the hards. We've got the softs. And Alpine's off the track. What the hell? There's so much stuff is going on. Oh my god. Right. Lap 32 out of 32 then. Valtteri Bottas is your race winner. He may or may not take the lead of the championship from us now. But it's two races in. Doesn't really matter. Anyways, we're not going to catch up to Ricardo, but we are going to get P4 in the second race of the season. Okay, I will take that. And bring it home. Yes, another historic win under their belts. Well done to the team at Mercedes. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. Let's see how the driver's standings have changed. Despite the best efforts of our championship leader, that lead has taken a bit of a knock today. Some amazing talent out on the track today. But Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? My driver of the day has to be, no question, Antonio Giovinazzi. Such an assured drive from one of the sport's newer stars and a performance he can be very, very proud of. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Mercedes move to the top of the table. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula 1. We keep our lead then. P2 in the Constructors. Uh, thank you for watching this one. I'd say that was a pretty good, good race. Except from Mick being taken out by getting sandwiched. That's unfortunate. But that's racing. Thank you for joining me for this one. I hope to see you next time. See you then.